Good morning, everybody. Oh, hi, Carly. Good morning, Carly. It is decently early in the morning, and we are out here in the garden um, getting ready for a big harvest. So everything is kind of dying back and ready to harvest, like as you can see the potatoes. Um, normally, you would let these potatoes go all the way floppy, all the way yellow, all the way dead. But I think we're gonna harvest them because they are. I did check, and they we do have good finger. These are just fingerling potatoes, all of these, so they're they're good fingerling size, and um, like baby potatoes. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. I'm a little on the fence, but I don't. Usually, you would let them die back completely if you want them to get a really thick um, skin, and we don't need that with fingerling potatoes. So. I don't know. We can do carrots, probably. We got onions. The onions didn't get very big this year, but that's okay. Um, we got a bunch of tomatoes, zucchini. It's just time. The garden is big, large, and in charge. As you can see, the onions are ready to come out. They're just flat because of that hailstorm. Um, the zucchini plant is massive. There's lots going on. But as you can see, everything is starting to like kind of die. And everything is starting to go because I think a cooler fall is coming. I'm thinking we're going to get hit with a pretty cold winter. I don't know. I just, I can feel it. You can always feel it coming. And the transition is always very fast in August where it's like really hot. When, like today is our hot, last hot day that we'll have probably. And then it dips down like tomorrow is supposed, no, two days from now is supposed to be like 12 degrees. So it's going to be kind of a jarring adjustment so I'm trying to do as much of the garden as I can. Our sunflowers are finally, finally coming out as you can see. Across the yard over there, a little sunflower patch. Grass is like dead everywhere. Like it's not dead. We've, I've been like trying to save it and I've been treating it but honestly we're gonna like redo everything in the fall and let it sit over winter and then hopefully come back better in the spring. It's just the smoke in the air and everything. There's no saving it and we're in a drought. I'm not worried about water in my grass right now. Okay, it's quite windy, so I haven't filmed much because it's going to be crap, but we got all the onions out and a lot of the carrots that were big enough. Harvested some tomatoes, did whatever we could in here. So this is our... Our onions just didn't grow. We didn't plant them early enough, but that's okay. They're still little. We're still going to let them cure. I'm going to dehydrate all these. You guys can't hear me. Flowers. And now we're working on the potato station. So we did one fingerling potatoes and now we'll cure them in these boxes so we just dump it onto the tarp put the dirt back when it's done and get the potatoes out so these ones are russian fingerlings and these ones are the purple potatoes but fall is coming you can feel it yeah here's my garden helper and this is the old man that likes to sit and watch us <laughs> he's another garden helper yes. we're both garden helpers garden helpers <laughs>
Hey everybody! I'm just cooking some dinner and I decided I was going to chat with you guys for a minute. Okay, but first, I'm making, it doesn't look delicious, but can you guys trust me on this? I just roasted some zucchini from the garden with tomatoes in some butter and then this magical seasoning. So I don't know if you can see, like that's what it looks like. It doesn't look good. Well, it like looks kind of like mush, but it's so freaking good. Oh, I have to show you. So I really hope that you guys have this all over wherever you are in your Costco's. This stuff, this Kinder's rub, it's so good. It's a dehydrated butter rub and it's just seasoning, salt, like garlic salt and dehydrated butter. And it is the freaking best. It's organic, like non-GMO. It's amazing on everything. Meat, eggs, vegetables, potatoes, like you name it. And this stuff makes it so good. I don't know where we were in our life before we had this. So here is the packaging. Screenshot this if you want and buy it. You will thank yourself for that purchase later. It's amazing, I had to share. Like fish, vegetables, chicken, beef, everything. So good. Potatoes, oh my God. It's great on eggs, like, ugh. I said that, but I can't get over it. Okay, so I'm just making dinner. I'm making that to balance out a really like kind of shitty dinner because today is the last day that we have a loan and Cody is coming home tomorrow. And that's what I'm actually gonna chat with you guys about a little bit. And because I had filmed a whole section explaining it and it turned out to be freaking 16 minutes long. Rainbow, what are you going to learn? So I'm just gonna like give you cliff notes now that I'm like in my speed talky evening mode um, while I make dinner. But yeah, I'm making like smiley faces and chicken nuggets. And I was like, oh, that, that's rough. So I made some fresh garden veggies to go with it to make it less awful. But honestly, if you just do chicken nuggets and smiley face potatoes some nights, that's okay. Um, it's just too hot and too smoky to cook and the. Anyway, I wish I could show you guys around the neighborhood because it looks like fog, but it's just smoke, but it's supposed to go away tomorrow. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow. I'm so grateful. Okay, let's go sit and talk about this. I have three minutes until that beaver goes off. Let's have this be a view. I need a taller tripod, but I don't want something so bulky to carry around. I just hate how it's like all chins. Um, I'll do this. Hey, um, okay. The kids are playing at a friend's house right now, so I have a few minutes so they come home for dinner. But I wanted to answer a few rapid fire questions that you guys might have. I was going to film and kind of put some more vlogs up, but I decided just to put this one up. By the time you're seeing this, Cody will be home. So that's wonderful. He did get stuck in America though. Cody absolutely got stuck in America for four and a half days extra days than he was supposed to. So he's coming home tomorrow, bright and early in the morning on Monday, uh, which is the day that you guys are seeing this. So he'll already be home, but um, it's the same day that he's coming home the same day you're seeing this. Hopefully if I can edit in time. Um, so I wanted to answer a couple questions. One, why didn't I go? And I think it's kind of, it shows why I didn't go now that he got stuck in America. It was always going to be risky with, you know, the vid to fly, there's flies everywhere, um, together and potentially get stuck at the border or get stuck in a quarantine hotel or something to go weird because the rules change a lot and traveling between Canada and America right now is like crazy. Okay, Finn, you need to go outside? One sec. Anyway, it was always going to be a risk, so it just wasn't worth it. Cody's trip was so fast. It was 48 hours. It was supposed to be so fast. It was supposed to be just under 48 hours. And so it made more sense for him to just fly one day, have his procedure, fly the next day, and me to stay home with the kids just in case. Um, also, the cost, like, it would have been a couple grand extra for me to fly and, and come with him. So it just didn't make sense for me to go. It's a very quick outpatient procedure. And there, if it was a bigger operation, that would make sense. But since he didn't need anybody to care for him and he was just fine to sit in the hotel, it wasn't very logical for me to go with him. So that's why I didn't go. 
Um, the next thing, Cody is doing brilliantly. He is so good post-op. So he is now four days post-op and he's doing wonderfully. He's like, it's slightly more uncomfortable than his vasectomy was, but he's like, my pain, he said his pain is like a one. Like it's, it's, it's uncomfortable a little bit, but that's it. So that's wonderful news. He's not having any adverse reactions. He's not, and nothing is wrong. And that is wonderful. He has just been chilling in a hotel, watching cartoons, eating American food and <laughs> waiting to come home. So hold on. Now the thing, oh, hold on. <laughs> My glass is fogged up. <laughs> okay. So the thing I'm going to talk about really quick here, I'm not gonna explain the whole thing. That was the problem. I tried to explain all of it to you. I don't need to explain all of it to you. The reason he got stuck in America, why couldn't he come home? So basically he had to take a test. It was negative. And then you had 72 hours to fly and come back. He was told his test would be perfectly valid to go and come back since his trip was under 48 hours. And we called the airlines in both places like he checked everything all the t's were crossed all the i's were dotted it should not have been an issue but it was they denied his negative test because things changed at our border a little bit on the 9th and he was traveling and now by the time he gets home all of our restrictions have lifted as of yesterday like we're not even testing anymore here so like oh I said the naughty word. We're not even testing anymore here. Um, so things changed while he was traveling. And for some reason, they just said, nope, you need another test um, before you'll come back. It wasn't supposed to be a problem. It was a problem. Dumb. So stupid. Such a waste of money. Now, we had two options. He could either fly first class home that day for over $2,000 or he could spend like $500 and just stay four days in a hotel at the airport and wait until the next available flight. There were no available flights to Calgary, where like the area we live in, from the entire south of America that were available. They were only, so he, he had a connecting flight. He was going Tulsa to Dallas to Calgary in Calgary to Dallas to Tulsa. And there was only one plane going to Calgary every day from Dallas. There were no connecting flights, no nothing. He like exhausted all his options and the plane was booked until Monday morning. And so he was just like, okay, I guess I have to wait. Like he looked into driving home. He looked into driving to another state and getting on a different plane. He looked into all the things and nothing would have worked because travel isn't fully back up yet so although calgary's international airport is huge a huge airport um travel just isn't back up to what it should be yet so things are limited so don't let this scare you if you're planning to travel i've had a few people message me being like oh um but i think it was just like a weird situation and travel is rapidly improving like every day um so it was just like a weird circumstance that we didn't expect but we were prepared for some weirdness so thankfully we fully prepared we've been fine like i prepped for like a week and a half of groceries when he left and meal plans because i figured if he didn't feel nice after his reversal and he was like really needed to hunker down and stay home we didn't know if we were going to be quarantined when he got here um so i just like over prepared so we've been fine um more than fine like i haven't run out of anything yet so that's good the plus i guess to all of this is he's only missing one day of work and he does not have to quarantine when he gets home because there's no more quarantine here and also even if there was he would be exempt from it because he had surgery and he has like notes and and things like that proving that he had surgery so a weird exemption he falls under anyway so that is the whole story in a quick note and it's chaotic and it's a mess but four days later i feel better about it i was like oh my god what if you don't like what if something goes wrong Blah. so he has actually had a great time he went to a wrestling show because you know there's wrestling in america and it almost never comes to canada and there was one in tulsa it's not wasn't his favorite it's wwe which he likes but it's not his favorite but he was like dude when am I, when else am i gonna go and i was like go like make this trip an adventure 
if it has to be, let's turn this ordeal into an adventure. Just go have fun. Go to the wrestling show. He was feeling great. So he went. He got his second test as well. Oh, stop saying the word. He got his second test as well. That came back negative, of course. And now he's good to fly home. So he'll be here when you see this video. And I'm so grateful. And also, the heat wave breaks at the same time. We've been in a smoky, hazy heat wave. And we're supposed to finally get rain. So anyway, that is the story. I'm gonna feed my kids this weird ass dinner and I'll talk to you guys after. Hey you guys, it is now 10 o'clock. I tend to end the vlogs at like 10 o'clock at night when I get that. <laughs> I'm finishing season two or like watching season two of Outer Banks because it came out. Where are my people at who are also Outer Banks fans? <laughs> it's such a fun summer show. I love it. Um, anyway, that's what I'm doing, and technically tonight, Cody will be flying home, so when you guys see this, he'll be home, and I'm just so, so excited to have him here. It's been a long week, and I just can't wait to have him home, and snuggling him, and just, like, having my husband back, and my partner back. <laughs> um, the kids are so excited, oh my goodness. Poor Carly and Finn, but like Carly's really a daddy's girl and she, I can tell, doesn't understand where he is. Like the for, like for like three or four days, she just sat in front of the door and like waited for him and he didn't come home and it was so sad. So she's going to be an absolute monster tomorrow. She's like, I'm worried she <laughs> might be your pet. I'm going to have to get Cody to text me that... Um, he's on his way home so I can let her out and make sure she's peed before he comes home <laughs> and just in case and then um I feel like she's just gonna be like so excited she's just, she's very vocal she's a very vocal dog she like talks to you and like barks when she's happy and <laughs> so I think she's gonna be like <laughs> anyway we'll see I'll film it <laughs> um Anyway, you guys, I'm going to end this vlog. Thank you for watching and doing some gardening with me. And I can't wait for a couple of rainy days. Uh, but mostly, I just can't wait for my husband to be home. Um, if there are any videos you guys want to see during this process that maybe I haven't thought of filming, um, let me know. Otherwise, I'll chat with you guys more in upcoming vlogs about what's going on and, and things like that. But... Um, I think, like, the TTC period is going to be pretty chill. I'm not going to be one to be, like, I don't really plan to be obsessive about this, so I don't know how many, like, videos you guys are going to get about trying to conceive before it's, like, pregnancy content, you know? I don't know. That's just a little weird for me. Like, I don't want to be, like, oh, I'm tracking it. Like, I, I like... I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I don't like it. So I want to be way, way more relaxed um, and just approach this with a very grateful heart and know that when it is um, our baby's window to come to us, that they will come to us. And yeah. Anyway, getting ahead of myself, but Cody's coming home tomorrow. So excited. I'm going to film that. Um, so the next vlog you will see will be his homecoming and chatting with him and talking about the whole, whole ordeal and I'm really excited for that. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being so supportive. And all of the beautiful, lovely comments and messages from the last video about him going for his reversal. Thank you. Thank you so much for everybody who was thinking of us. Sending us positive vibes. Sending us prayers. Whatever you do to put forth good energy towards somebody. I appreciate all of you who are doing that and who have contacted me. Um, saying that you're doing that, that is so sweet. I really genuinely appreciate that. Like, no matter what your belief system is or what you do, um, just the fact that you're taking time out of your own life and your own day to think about us and to send us love is a really beautiful thing and that it's not lost on me. So thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. And I'm so grateful for this community. Thank you guys for following along. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.